hello everyone. Brody and I are outside today because we were just we were just looking around at these humongous trees and that smooth table and these this gumdrop green grass and this tiny little orange ball. Maybe there's some fire truck red on that on that yellow bag of mulch. If you guys couldn't guess, week number five is going to be continued dedication to elaborating our adjective knowledge. We could spend weeks and weeks on adjectives. Um, and so we're just going to kind of do another crash course of adding to our adjective knowledge. There is our co-teacher sleeping on the job. She's, she's rusty, rusty red fur and, and snow white patches really into adjectives today. Welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome writers to week. We'll go, we'll go the other way. Welcome to week number five, Thursday, May 21st, to our writing virtual classroom. It's great to see everyone. You guys have done fantastic work. You should be very proud of yourselves. Um, today, we are going to continue talking about how to add more adjective details into our work. The, the strategy is the same. Um, we are just going to kind of deepen our adjective knowledge. Um, and you guys have got a chance to go back into your personal sequence narratives and change around any adjectives after this new learning and we'll do another photo activity. Um, we are in the office now, still have, still taken over this office. Welcome, virtual expectations for the office. If you need to go play some Minecraft before you dive into this lesson to get your brain churning, sure, go do it, for sure. This can be done at your leisure, remember. We just asked that this lesson be done after you do all the previous ones because it's a building the building block of skills we're doing here. So if you need to go play Minecraft and come back, go do it. If you need to do other lessons, go do it. If you want to get a snack, for sure, go get one. Um, just excited for this lesson. This is going to be our last kind of time to, to think about strategies around our PSN. And then the following week is going to be time where we will collaborate and kind of polish them up. And I'm excited to read what you guys come up with in the end. It's very exciting. Um, OK, I'll see you guys in the virtual PowerPoint. Hello, everyone, and welcome to writing lesson number five, Thursday, May 21st, 2020. Diving deeper into adjectives. If you hear some rustling, I think, in this PowerPoint, it's because I'm going to take it off of my keyboard soon so I can have neater handwriting for some of our um, activities in here today. So I apologize if something goes awry or something becomes loud. It's just me fidgeting. But we still have our Apple pen. Just want to write a bit neater. Okay, learning targets. We are going to do a quick review of parts of speech. Just very quick, you know, what are parts of speech? Then we're gonna review adding adjective details and then really do a bigger exploration of diving deeper into our adjectives. Remember those 12 categories? We're gonna, we're gonna talk about some of them. So there are so many words in the English language. More than one million, in fact. More than one million words. And we can categorize our English words into basic types called parts of speech. Knowing how to categorize words helps us use them in our writing. So the parts of speech that we're gonna focus on now and next year, the main ones are gonna be nouns, adjectives, verbs, adverbs, and prepositions. So we started to focus on parts of speech when we were writing our relevant fact details, when we were identifying the noun in the preceding sentence, those objects, ideas, um, places, events. And we're continuing our parts of speech study with our talk on adjectives. So reviewing from last time, adding adjective details. Now you all have, you know, are writing your personal sequence narratives. Last week we were adding our adjective details. To do this, we identified nouns, another, you know, our other part of speech we've been working on, our nouns or pronouns in a sentence. And then with those nouns in mind, we asked ourselves, how can we, how can we describe this noun? And we came up with all of, the, all of the words in pink that we wrote. These were all of the adjectives we added. Sunny morning, tall louder, brown dirt, small fruit, golden maple syrup, sun-kissed yellow, ripe loquats, halved loquats, pint-sized loquats, yummy gummy candy, delicious treat. That was adding rich detail, rich adjective detail into our personal sequence narratives, telling our story, hopefully bringing our readers deeper into the moment that was memorable for us. 
So for the purposes of today, we are going to dive deeper into adjectives. Um, as I as I spoke about, you're gonna you're gonna go deeper into our adjectives with our personal sequence narratives, and and later on kind of tweak, look at if you want to change any of them. So we're gonna do a, a, a big overarching review of of some of those categories. So remember, an adjective is a word that describes a noun or a pronoun. Small fruit, red apple, green leaf, short stem. You know, light apple. This apple is light in my hand. It's not very heavy. All of those descriptive words we can use to, to characterize our noun. I've made a few more sentences with and without adjectives, and I want you guys to think about as I read them, you know, why is it important that we add adjectives into our writing? So we could write a sentence that says, the grapes are in the bowl. Okay, the grapes are in the bowl. Or we could write, the plum purple grapes in the bowl looked delicious. The plum purple grapes in the bowl look delicious. That kind of gets my, my, my taste buds going. It, it, it's, it's richer, it brings me more into, into that bowl of, of grapes. I just want to try one versus, versus the other more bland, which is another adjective, another a more bland sense. We could also write a sentence that says, the trees are big. Okay, the trees are big. Or, the trees, tall and ancient. There's a size adjective, and ancient is one of our hard three. That is an age adjective. Filled the enchanted forest. I want to read that story. That's a sentence that grabs me in as a reader. So adjectives tell us how something sounds, how something feels, how something behaves. Is it wild? Is it tame? It tells us about a noun. It tells us how many. You know, there were a bunch of grapes in the bowl, or there's only a few grapes in the bowl. How a noun looks. Brody looks like a yellow, blonde, I'm just looking at him right now, bear cub. He looks really fluffy. How something feels. Brody feels really fluffy. The size. Rosie is, is bigger than Brody. What color something is. Earlier we were talking about how Rosie is rusty, rusty red, and she has patches of snow white on her body. So there are descriptive words. And we can categorize our adjectives into 12 specific types. Can you guess any of them? We talked about it a little bit last week. So we have our easy four, which are color. This is where we were focused last week. Color, size, shape, number. Then we have our five senses. That has everything to do with, with, our, with our senses. Smell, flavor, taste, texture, temperature, sounds like, inner feelings, which are emotions. And the hard three, we're not going to talk about so much today, maybe in a later lesson, but our hard three are made of, what something is made of, the composition of it, age, like the word ancient we just saw, and the design of something. Our focus is more going to be on the easy four and five senses. So we're going to dive a bit deeper into color, shape, flavor, and taste today. But a lot of the posters I provide you guys with have to do with these, have to do also with sounds like, that sounds like a a blaring horn outside that fire truck. Inner feelings, happy, emotional, sad, joyful, texture, temperature, the, the, the rocky turtle shell. It's a really cool wind outside today. So thinking about color, we can create richer, rich color adjectives by associating a target color with a familiar object, like fruit, Vegetable, weather, flower, gems, and just various objects that we're familiar with. So instead of saying red, instead of just saying that, I'm looking at my bottle cap right now on my Evian, that this, this cap is red, I could say my Evian cap is ruby red. That adds a little bit more to it. So this familiar object of a ruby is red. We can call something ruby red or asparagus green. That grass out there looks like a, is, is asparagus green. Or that the, the leaves on that tree are asparagus green. Or lightning white for a lightning bolt. Sunflower yellow. The sun in the sky today is, is sunflower yellow. So we can focus on a target color like red. So fruit, we could say strawberry red. Poppy red, rose red. For an object, ruby red, Mustang red, that car, Mustang, that, that, I think it's a Ford is usually associated with the color red, Mustang red or fire truck red. An element 
like like fire, water, wind, earth, fire red. What about blue? I'll give you guys some thing time. What's a blue fruit? Well, blueberry, blueberry blue. It's a blue gem, sapphire blue. The sky was sapphire blue when I woke up this morning. Rainy blue, water, water spout blue or sky blue. For green, we could do green apple, Asian guava, grape green, bell pepper green, broccoli green, kale green, emerald green, unripe pumpkin green. So those are our, our color. I didn't mean to go too fast there, but those are some of our colors. And I'll have, um, I'll have a chance in the photo activity for you guys to kind of elaborate there. And also I, I put some posters up on our seesaw. Now for elaborating our shape batch tips. So we gradually learn to distinguish different shapes of objects when, when we're perceiving different objects in our environment when we're younger, um, as we kind of explore our environment like the roundness of a ball or the squareness of a box, very tangible. We learn our shaped adjectives as we take note of the nouns in our environment. And you know, maybe some of you remember in kindergarten or pre-K when you had a water table or a light table. As we're touching, as we're touching these tangible objects, we're also you know, developing our shape adjectives. Much of our shape knowledge is based in geometric shapes and we can link in shape adjective with common nouns and vocabulary. So some of them are, if the physical shape is square, we can call something square. If the physical shape is circle, we can call it circular. The, the egg is circular. Rectangle, rectangular, rectangular. The table I'm working on right now is a rectangular table, a rectangular desk. Triangle, triangular. Those are the shape name that we can then associate with the adjective. If we're looking at lines, we could call something jagged or straight or bumpy or curved. The, the mountain peaks were very jagged, the jagged mountain peaks or the straight trail in the forest or the bumpy path in the park or the curved, the curved tree trunk that, that, that jutted out, that stuck out um, on our bumpy path. There's so many shape adjectives. I have this as a resource in our, in our Seesaw classroom, but there are so many shape adjectives. Skinny, small, smallish, smooth, big, gigantic, so many. And a lot of the time, shape and size coincide. They, they go together. So something could also be shape and it could also be size. Now let's get into some of our five senses that smell, flavor, taste, texture, temperature, sounds like, and inner feelings. So the five senses have to do with things that we can hear, smell, flavor of something, how we feel, what it sounds like. So smell and flavor could be the smoky fire. The fireman ran into the smoky fire. Or as I was lying on the grass with Brody, I, or as I was lying on the fragrant grass with Brody, the smell filled my nostrils. Taste could be, I had some salty chips for lunch today and I finished it off with some sour candy and then a little bit of spicy salsa. Ch texture and temperature could be chewy beef jerky or a damp towel after you get out of the pool. Sounds like would be loud music. Sometimes people play really loud music and I hear it as, as I'm walking down the street to school. Or a chirping bird. I love the sound of chirping birds in the morning. And our inner feelings are, 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 are how, how our emotional states are. Joyful children or those angry seagulls that are, that are chirping, chirping all the time. Or a proud student after they, get, they did their best on an assignment. So just looking at our smell and flavor adjectives, that smoky fi fire, smelly fish. So smell and flavor are grouped together because they are closely related and share a lot of vocabulary. Flavor is an important descriptor of food, like chocolate and peppermint. Smell is generally associated with odor, like smoky or fresh, fresh flowers. So to expand our flavor adjectives, we can do a little, we can associate them with, very, with, with objects. I chose ice cream for this one. So we would do a color adjective plus an ice cream to get a flavor word. So we could call something banana ice cream. Now we would think of yellow and we would think of an ice cream flavor and then it would come to banana ice cream. We wouldn't just say yellow ice cream, but we could say yellow banana ice cream. And the reason that we don't say banana yellow ice cream is because then that banana would be describing that yellow. Adjective order is important, that's a bit advanced. We wanna say yellow banana because then that describes the flavor of ice cream that it is. So looking at this, what flavor could pink ice cream be? Pink ice cream 
we got a flavor word. It could be, oh, you can't see it. I was thinking of strawberry. That helps us think of a flavor word if we're thinking about a color plus ice cream. Okay, we got strawberry. That could be our flavor. Or green plus ice cream. What do you guys think? What flavor gr could green ice cream be? It could be mint chocolate chip or it could be green tea. Green tea or mint chocolate chip. What about white ice cream? What flavor could white ice cream be? Say peach. Peach could be our flavor word. We could also use candy for this exercise. So you could think of a color and then a type of candy, like cherry starburst. Or you could think of, let's say, purple plus our lollipop. What flavor could this lollipop be? Grape. So that's how we could come up with our different flavor adjectives. Taste adjectives is this kind of cool, I'm gonna teach you guys like a mnemonic strategy. It's called BATS. It's really B, two a t s four bats and they're letter cues to help us recall common taste adjectives so the first b would be bitter something that's bitter instead of just saying i had i had some chocolate after dinner you said some bitter chocolate that really makes that sentence a little bit richer with a little bit more description bitter the second b is bland you know, I wasn't feeling well, so I had some bland bread or, or a, a cup of bland white rice for dinner. Bland. The first A is acidic, something that's acidic, like pickles. Pickles are kind of acidic in your body. And tart. Tart is a little bit sour. That's your T. See how they all coincide with a letter. T is tart. And there's four S's. Our first is SW for sweet. Those donuts, those sweet donuts looked amazing on the table. We can, and for my PSN, I could use sweet loquat candies, but they were also a little bit sour. That's our second S, sour, like sour lemonade. Instead of just saying, I made a, I had a, I made a lemonade stand over the summer. I made a lemonade stand over the summer and my lemonade was super sour. Salty, talked about those salty chips earlier, salty fries. And spicy, spicy is our fourth one. Oh, that spicy salsa really made my mouth water. Now, for our photo activity. Again, this is kind of like a crash course in our adjectives. We are gonna look at a photo and list some nouns that we see. And then we are gonna describe those nouns with our adjectives. And I'll give you guys kind of some think time as we look at, as we look at the picture. And this is where I might make some noise taking my, my iPad off of its, off of its, um, what is this called? Keyboard here. And this will be a similar activity you guys are doing in Seesaw. All of these, all of these posters are in Seesaw. They will help you. You should have these handy while you're writing your PSNs. Here's our first photo. Let's take a look. So remember, first we are going to identify some nouns and then we are going to describe those nouns. I see this bear. I see some water, mountains. This bear looks kind of plump to me. Look at that plump bear. This water is kind of blurry, blurry water. What about gigantic mountains? All describe those nouns. Our next one. See some stones and a house and a tree. This looks like the ocean over here. What do you guys think? We could these kind of look like smooth stones to me. And this tree looks very hmm. I would say this this is a very tiny house. And the tree it looks really beautiful to me on that stone. Beautiful tree. What about the ocean? What does the ocean look like? What do you guys think? I would say it's like opaque. It means it's not very clear, opaque ocean. Oh, this looks very yummy. 
I see some pancakes, blueberries, I see some maple syrup, I see banana, I say go sun, hmm, I'm actually going to say golden maple syrup and fluffy pancakes and sour. Look at those probably are sour blueberries and banana. That looks like a pretty ripe, soft banana. So you guys are going to be doing a very similar activity. Just name those nouns and use an adjective to describe them. Awesome job. Very proud of you guys. Adjectives is a really big study. We, we did a really crash course into it. I could spend a long time talking about adjectives. So for your activities today, you have your photo activity and then just adding new adjectives to your PSN. I will see you guys back in our virtual classroom. All right, welcome back everyone. So now, if you'd like, go into that add response button in our Seesaw and you will see the first activity has a series of few pictures. Um, and what I'd like you to do is identify, just like we did in the PowerPoint, identify some nouns that you've seen the picture and then describe those nouns with our adjectives. There's a bunch of posters in this lesson and in the previous lesson that have just lists of different adjectives you guys can use. Um, so there's a few pictures there, do one, do two, do three, do whatever you think is good for you. And then you'll see directions for our second activity, which is going back into our personal sequence narratives and you know maybe changing around. Maybe instead of using a shape adjective, you're gonna use a size adjective. Maybe instead of using a color adjective, you want to use a richer color adjective or you want to use a flavor adjective to describe whatever you're describing. Um, really, really look forward to seeing your work. As always, if you have any questions, if you have any wonderings, we're here. We're here to help you. Happy to hop on a Zoom. Happy to hop on the phone. Happy to send a message. Just let us know if you need any help. And I look forward to reading what you guys, what you guys write for us. And we will see you next week. Wow, for week number six. Miss you guys. Can't believe it's been this long. Whoa. All right. Have a lovely, lovely Thursday.